duplex ultrasound for terminal and preterminal valves and implications for Chiva treatment. Yevgeny, thank you for this topic and the invitation to participate in Petersburg, even not being there, like I was four years ago where these photos were made. The most important per, uh, point to investigate is the saphenofemoral junction, uh, which is composed by the common femoral vein, um, the great saphenous vein, the groin tributaries, and the artery next. We have terminal valves and preterminal valves in the great saphenous vein. We have deep vein valves, and we have cranial and medial groin tributaries. The flow in the saphenofemoral junction in the healthy person is from tributaries to saphenous vein and from saphenous vein to the deep vein. This means from the net three tributaries to the net two interfascial veins to the deep veins. And we have to be aware that the tributaries in the groin flow downwards, but this is anterograde because they drain the lower abdominal party and drain into the great saphenous vein and then in the deep vein. We have different flow provocation maneuvers. One is Valsalva, everybody knows it, which is be refined as the Cremona maneuver where you use a folded straw and the people should blow inside and this is easier to perform than the Valsalva. We have the classical manual compression, decompression of the calf, the toe elevation maneuver. We have dependency weight transfer maneuvers. And one very important uh, maneuver is the dependency maneuver. Sometimes you have obvious um, reflux in saphenous vein. You have tributaries, but when you look at it, you don't see a flow. And in this case, you lay the person down 20 seconds with the leg up, and then you're invited to get up again, and you will have a long-lasting filling flow. This is seldom, but sometimes it helps to sort out if there is really a reflux or not. This is the same vein standing position, manual compression, decompression after standing of 10 minutes. And this is just after dependency maneuver. Very important if you don't find out the thing you want. So now let's come back to the flow in the saphenofemoral junction where you can apply all of those provocation maneuvers and you should use at least two to be sure. If there is a reflux in the great saphenous vein, we have to find out exactly where it comes from. It can come from a tributary at the thigh, it can come through a perforator at the thigh, but if it comes from the groin, we have to differentiate. So it can be axial. This means it comes from the deep vein through the terminal and preterminal valve and go inside the great saphenous vein. This is called Chantep 103 in Chiva, and it is 60% of the patients that come to a surgical office to be treated like Solman investigated. Here you see the classical image in the systole. You push up the blood, you elevate the toes or you compress the calf. And in diastole, you have clear reflux from the deep vein through the terminal valve into the superficial vein. If you make a cross section, you have to put the probe immediately in the osteal level. This is here. This is the systole, this is the diastole. If you put a ring around the deep vein, you will have just the position of the probe there to be sure that you're testing the terminal valve. So this is the axial reflux, but then we have the situation that the terminal valve is competent and we have a reflux from one of the groin tributaries, which might be pelvic or epigastric origin. And this one is called paraosteal reflux with competent terminal valve and incompetent preterminal valve. And this composes the shunt types four or five and happens in 20% of the patient, one of five patients coming to surgery, not with a little varicose, but to surgery, have this kind of option. So how do we see this? We have a systole where we see an anterograde flow. We have a diastole where we see a retrograde flow, but not from the deep vein, only from the tributary. Another image. This is the tributary, great saphenous vein, common femoral vein, systole with evident flow to the deep vein, 
diastole with a flow from the tributary, not from the deep vein. And if we look at it in the cross section, here again, we see the deep vein and here we see the reflux source. There is no reflux from the deep vein. So what do we do with this information in Chiba? In the shunt type five, we have a competent terminal valve. We have a reflux from a groin tributary. Refluxing in the great saphenous vein, we have no perforating vein draining the great saphenous vein, and we have a tributary draining the reflux to a perforator more distal. This is the shunt type 5. What happens if we just deconnect the tributary? This is called Chiva 2, because at least the terminal valve is sufficient. And if we deconnect this one, there is no escape point below. And then the reflux from the groin tributary will drain into the deep vein and there will be no longer a recirculation in the great saphenous vein. And this result happens in 97% of the patients with this situation. This was published by Zamboni. So if we have terminal valve competent reflux in great saphenous vein, we interrupt the tributary, we will have in 97% an anterograde healthy grade saphenous vein. And this is one out of five patients scheduled for surgery, not those coming with little varicose veins where this is much more uh, often to be found. In this kind of situation, sometimes it won't work. The reflux will still be in the saphenous vein and drain through another vein, through another new perforating vein opening or new tributary. So how can we imagine which one will work? It depends on the distance between the groin and the start of the tributary. If the tributary is at the thigh, the chance that it will work is higher. If the diameter of the great saphenous vein is little, the chance is also higher. The first intervention is always minimalistic. You have only a little cut, you have one only tributary um, dissection. What is the Chiva option if you have an axial reflux, which is most often? If you have shunt type one or three, this one is one because you have a draining perforator on the great saphenous vein, you will have to interrupt the saphenofemoral junction. When Chiva was first published, we only knew surgery and um, Franceschi published the uh, um, interruption of the crosser of the osteal level of the saphenofemoral junction between the tributaries and the deep vein so that the tributaries would wash out blood into the great saphenous vein and avoid a thrombosis of the saphenous vein. More modernly, you could make a short laser or a short endoluminal closure of the great saphenous vein distal to the preterminal valve, allowing a drainage of the uh, tributaries of the groin to the deep vein. If you have this finding, in, like in this case, with a perforator and a new secondary tributary, you should also interrupt the tributary at the level of the saphenous vein. So this was very important because the differentiation between the terminal and preterminal valve functioning changes a lot in the treatment if you apply Chiva. If you have more interested information, you find one book uh, about duplex ultrasound and one book of saphenous vein sparing strategies. And um, this is a moment to thank you for the invitation, for the attention, and I hope that we will meet next year in Hanover, where I'm the president of the German Congress, which will be also international. Take care.